Hey, this is David Dweeb for part 3 of the uh, Let's Play video that I'm making, just to show you a little bit more now of the mid-game. I showed you earlier in the two videos I made before the first 20 minutes or so of playing a game. Now I've, got, I've built up my economy a little bit, we're now 10 years into the game, we can start to show you uh, a little bit more of, the, uh, more of the gameplay that comes in later in the game. So, let's take a look down here. I didn't explain before, but down here are the objectives that you're offered. Unlike objectives in a lot of other games, these ones don't expire. You can accept them at any time, they will remain there until you actually fulfill them. So there's actually no disincentive to accepting them, except that you'll end up with a list of them as long as you're armed. In any case, um, you, you get off them every six months or so, and what you'll you generally have to do is link up two points, like this old lady is asking me to link this particular department store with her apartment building down here. Now, the annoying thing that i found with these objectives is that a lot of the time you'll see something like this, where the link won't actually appear at all in the description. You actually have to accept before you can even see the two points where you have to uh, provide a connection. That's just annoying. It's not, it's not great design, and it would be great to be able to prioritize which objectives you want to do first before you actually accept them. In any case, what I've done now is uh, is build up a fairly comprehensive network that actually covers an area quite close to where this lady would go. So what I may as well do is uh, is connect my metro line, which I've uh, set up down here, to an area near the uh, near the apartment that she's talking about. So first let's click on the apartment and accept the mission. I'm going to build uh, a metro line somewhere somewhere around here that will cover as much area as possible. So let's go metro. Oh, I'll also resume the game because I paused earlier. Let's go metro station. I'm going to build it down here. Now metros are more fiddly than, uh, than bus stops, but they're still pretty awesome because they they make a hell of a lot of money, they have a huge capacity, they're fast and they're reliable. So I'm going to build this station here, and then we can go into underground mode. I'll zoom out a little bit. What I have here is my metro station near the airport, which you can see is, is already fairly busy. I'm going to connect it here. And something I learned pretty quickly when building metros is that if you have that connection there, you can't just uh, connect the train from this station here directly down here. You actually have to build that extra link there. It doesn't automate that for you uh, like SimCity would. That's cool. I'm totally fine with that. I'm going to uh, uh, connect my existing line to the station that I've just built. Now, I think it's line 6. Yep, line 6 up here. I'm going to add stop. And something really cool about the game is that uh, when you add a stop to an existing route, it actually optimizes it for you. So what we've got here is uh, what we've got here is the, the route that originally down, went down here. The game's actually worked out the fastest way to add the new station to that route. So all I have to do is reactivate that line and uh, we'll automatically start to see traffic appearing down there. So what we've got is uh, a fairly simple um, bus network on top of this. So I'm going to go back up to the surface and what I've been doing in this game is trying to make the uh, metro network uh, complement the uh, existing uh, bus network. So I'm also going to build a simple bus stop down here, uh, like that I suppose, and then we can connect it up here as well. So that way we'll, uh, we'll have a, a network going in both directions. So I'll add that as well. I'll create a new line. Oops. I'll add stop there, and down to here, and down to this lady's apartment building, and straight back up again, we'll loop up. I'll buy one more bus. Now something I've noticed with the game, which is pretty odd, is that if you take a look at the video in high res, you'll be able to see that the likelihood of breakdown for this bus is 4%. For every other bus, it's 35, 45, 50 percent. You'll see that this one's actually got pretty much the same speed as the others. It has the second lowest capacity, but it's still hardly small. It's actually the most attractive of those buses as well. So there's pretty much no reason not to use this bus. Um, I haven't, I haven't used any other buses at all um, in this particular uh, in this particular map, and I can't imagine why. It might be that later on in the game you'll get buses that are uh, 
more valuable than that, but it's strange. Okay, fantastic. So we now need to connect up to this department store here for this part of the mission. I'll uh, make a bus route there. Fantastic. And then you can see that there's already a route that goes past here, so let's t see if we can work out which route that is. You can uh, uncheck the visibility of, um, of each line as you go, but what I've noticed is that uh, these lines are... Uh, yeah, these buttons up here are hardly easy to click. They're pretty small, and to be honest, a bit annoying. So we're going to add that stop there. Fantastic. And then we'll reactivate that line. And we can get back to uh, what we were doing before. Every year you'll also get your annual report and you'll start to see the kind of uh, money you've been making and your uh, reputation with the uh, with the public. You can see I've got a reasonably good reputation um, and you'll see I'm also making a fat profit now whereas before I was hemorrhaging cash in the early part of the game. Um, I found it actually really difficult to uh, start up the game but um, yeah, to start up in the early part of the game because um, making money early on involves finding a few very small, very profitable routes and exploiting the hell out of them. So for now, what we can do is, I can see a number of buses here that just aren't carrying anyone anymore. Earlier on in the game, um, uh, earlier on in the game I was making plenty of money off a few simple routes, but over time those routes have been changing. So I can uh, look at Route 9, I can see that almost no one is travelling on Route 9 anymore. So I'm just going to uh, uh, cut it right back. In fact, I'm actually going to delete that line. Fantastic. And then I can take a look at my vehicles, and in fact I'll, I'll just sell those buses and make a bit more money back. You can also see that uh, over here the metro platform number 2 has a bunch of people waiting for line 2. That's not a problem. I can use the money I just saved to buy another, uh, another tram for that line. Okay, fantastic. Now what I want to do is uh, promote my um, promote my business. So now I haven't done this before, so this will be interesting. Um, I mean I'm going to go to the advertising tab. And there are four kinds of advertising campaigns available to me at the moment. It's 1990. In fact this is Berlin. Um, so 1990 we should be seeing the fall of the Berlin Wall, but I don't think the game supports that kind of uh, geopolitical depth. Um, I can put a I can advertise in a newspaper uh, and billboards on the radio or on TV if I want to get uh, look for different markets and so I think what I want to do is uh, improve my business with sort of um, middle class so I'll be looking at the newspaper uh, newspaper advertising I'm going to see about uh, a slightly longer duration let's look at four months but in order to do that that's four and a half grand I need to spend I actually need to take out a loan there are three banks available to me in this game. In order to take a loan from them, I can uh, select the amount that I want to borrow, but each bank will have a set repayment period and a set interest rate. And the amount they're willing to loan you it depends entirely on um, how much money you have and essentially whether they think you can repay. So what I'm going to do is uh, go for a two-year loan from over here. Um, we're going to make it a fairly small loan. Let's make it six grand. Fantastic. You can see I already have a loan in pa uh, being paid off with uh, 3.8 grand still to pay off, but because I'm uh, making as much money as I am, that's not a big issue. So I'm going to put out that campaign and we'll start to see the, uh, the bus and tram routes that I've already set up start to uh, increase in business. And hopefully, we should be seeing uh, an imp um, improvement in my. Uh, total monthly profit. Right now I'm making about five grand, which is pretty great. So let's see what else we can do in this. We can actually change policy as well, and I, I thought this was pretty awesome. Um, you can change the ticket prices for uh, each of your individual uh, services um, independently of the others. You can also independently change your vehicle maintenance and stop station maintenance as well. And you can actually change the wages of your different workers um, as well. I've actually left them at the default here and they all seem pretty happy with that. But over time, if the uh, services start to get stressed and that kind of thing, they uh, they tend to get pretty unhappy. Um, I found it's pretty profitable to, uh, to connect up the airports pretty well. So you can see right here, there's always people um, at the airport terminal. There's uh, pretty much always people 
where were we at? The department stores, at the cathedral, for instance. In fact, this bus line, I, I kind of overstretched, and I have 194 people, 190 people waiting for the, uh, for buses there. Uh, and over here, because we've got the department store uh, right at the uh, center of my network, I'm actually going to have to buy some new trains to uh, to manage the uh, load on that line. So I'm going to buy two more trains there. Fantastic. And I think probably the last thing we'll, uh, we'll look at in this video is the, uh, the statistics available to you. Um, over time, your company reputation changes, and in fact it changes with different parts of the um, population demographics over time as well. So you, so you can actually see uh, that blue-collar workers, white-collar workers, business people, students, and so on, will actually all have different opinions of your, uh, of your company over time. So you can actually see that in the graph as well. And while the graph doesn't seem to uh, go into the same level of detail, it shows you a pretty good idea of your reputation over time. So you can work out over time what it is that you've been doing that's improved your reputation, that's improved the way uh, your services are being rendered to the public. Uh, over time, you can also watch how your total debt is affected. Uh, if I were to vastly increase the time scale, you can see that uh, at one point I was massively, massively in debt. And if I'm also to... Uh, uh, to look at my monthly profit over time, you can see that pretty much uh, two, three years after I went into debt, I tanked really badly. That was actually pretty embarrassing. I had to you know, walk away for, from the computer for five minutes while I waited for the uh, financial system to sort itself out. But uh, over time, it's improved pretty well. And you can also see over time, the uh, over the last five years, the value of the company has increased massively, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. So, last thing we might do is uh, just take a look around and see what other expansion we can do. Uh, it looks like over here uh, we have an expansion going just over to the other side of the bridge. I have just the one line over here, and uh, line six desperately needs another uh, uh, needs another tram, so I can add to that. That's not a problem. Fantastic. But where else might we want to do? might we want to go over here. So again, we're just going to have a quick look at what shopping's available. You can see there's a uh, department store up here that we haven't yet linked. And so what I might do is just add a uh, train stop up here, a uh, bus stop up here rather, and then we'll add a bus stop down here next to the uh, tram station in order to uh, link it up properly. We can go back over here, create a new line, add stops like we were before. So you can see, actually, I've done the wrong thing here. I need to remove that stop as well, because otherwise I'd be uh, adding a bus stop to the wrong side of the road, and frankly, I can't be bothered uh, putting a bus stop on the other side of the road to cover it. So we've got a new loop there. Set up a new set of buses for it. Again, I'm just going to go for the same old bus as I was before, because I can't be bothered. And my god, I'm now like nine grand in debt because it's just been the change of month. You see your uh, money come out, of, come out of your account at the uh, start of every month, pretty much on the dot. And so you ha at the start of every month, you might drop well into debt, and then uh, you really just have to wait for it, uh, wait for your money to come back. So I'm going to quickly take out a loan in order to cover cost. Beautiful. And then we can uh, buy the buses that I was going to before. I'll just buy two to cover the... Uh, start of the route. Activate, and there we go. Okay, fantastic. This has been the third part of the uh, Let's Play of Cities in Motion. So far it looks like the uh, the depth of the game is starting to increase quite nicely. It's becoming quite quite a challenge to uh, to keep up with the different routes that I'm establishing. So uh, maybe I'll uh, see you guys around for part four of the uh, Cities in Motion Let's Play.